It is time for creativity to amaze your audience with the best logo intro in your creation. Whether you're somebody who has a YouTube channel or who would like to add intros in your videos, well, this tutorial is for you. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an epic logo intro inside Create Studio 3. And before we dive deeper into this, I've got an example that I'd like to share with you. Let's have a watch and then come back to start creating. I hope you love the example. Now let's dive into creating it. And I want to say that this one was created a long time ago and I didn't really have a chance to make a tutorial about it. Although many of you have asked for it, but I really didn't have a chance because the design itself took me more than an hour to create. So it was going to take more than an hour in a tutorial to show you how you can do it. But luckily I figured out a better and a shortcut to do this. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. And then you can dive deeper into it and spend your time. If you want to do it by individual letters, then it's really up to you. And so before we start creating, I also want to say that this applies to business names. So you can use that as intros. If you have a YouTube channel or if you like to add intros in your videos, then you can certainly use that in your intros. And if you want to do your slogans, you can also do that. But you got to make sure that your slogan does not exceed three words. So it's either two or three words. If it's more than that, then it's not really going to work the way how it's intended. The shorter, the better. So let's dive into it. And I'm going to show you the shortcut to do this in a matter of minutes. So I'm going to start by removing this guy. And then I'm going to start by adding a rectangle shape to make that as my background. And I'm simply going to hit the shift key along with the letter R to make a rectangle. Then I'm going to scale it up to make it a full width. And then the next thing I'm going to do is simply change the color from blue to red. And then I'm going to start by grabbing my first text. So I'm going to hit the shift and the letter T to add a text. And then I'm going to edit my text and say ups and I'm going to make it all caps like that. Next, you're going to scale up your text and make it really big like this. And then you can start by creating the animation. So this would be our first step is to start by adding some preset motions and some keyframes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to motion onto the right panel and then I'm going to choose under position. I'm going to choose top. And as you can see, the text is gone and is kind of like very far out from the canvas. So first of all, I need to make sure that this guy is really close to the canvas how we can simply go under the preset settings that shows on the top right and then we're going to adjust the y position so we're going to hover over the percentage sign and drag to the left side so we can drag our text to the very bottom of the canvas and make it really close to it just like this then we're going to change the um, settings from paragraph to letters and then i'm going to also uh, change the easing so you can see easing it says smooth i'm simply going to click on that and then i'm going to choose uh, sign and then i'm going to make it in and out then i'm going to go back again into the settings and then i want to add a little bit of rotation to the text so all i'm going to do is i'm going to click on advanced settings that shows at the bottom of the panel right there and then i can add some rotation so i'm going to go to the rotation and hover over in the percentage sign and drag to the left side so I can rotate the letters a little bit like this. Then it's up to you how speedy you want it to be or slowed. It's um, it's totally up to you. But I'm going to extend the animation on the layer by making it a second and a half. And then just go back and then press play. And there you go. So we're good to go as far as uh, the preset motion. Now we want to make sure that we have our playhead exactly where the top animation ends and then we select our text then we're going to click on add animation above the timeline and then we're going to choose a couple of properties these are going to be a position and rotation easing is going to be sign as well for in and out and then i'm going to change by the um, the way how the text is being animated by clicking on the letter t right there that goes for changing the way how the text is being animated being sentence word or letters i'm going to do it by letters and then i'm going to keep it forward that's fine the letter offset is 50 percent. that's okay next we're going to select our second keyframe we're going to zoom out of our canvas and simply drag our text to the bottom of the canvas make sure it goes underneath it just like this and then we can add some rotation so we're going to rotate it to the right side just like that and then we can just drag it a little bit um, further down but let's go back and take a look at the whole thing together there you go. 
and then it will just fold down like that. Once this folds down, we're going to add another um, another text. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to add a border, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that our playhead is at the end of the top animation that we just created, the preset one. And then we're going to make a duplicate. So I'm going to hit the control and the letter D, or you can do command and D to make a duplicate. Then I'm going to select the layer underneath. So that was the first a text box that we added we're going to change this color so we're going to go to settings open up the color settings and then make this one black then i'm going to make sure it is still selected with my keyboard i'm going to hold the shift key and the right arrow key and i'm going to press twice so that i can have a little bit of a border as you can see or shadow um, if you call it that way that's fine and then what you want to do next is simply drag the text underneath just by one frame forward in time so there should be a difference of one frame if i zoom into the timeline you're going to see that there's a difference between the starting point of the duplicate text which is the white one and the shadow that we created uh, that will start one frame after the reason we do this because we had we want to have time difference between the first one and the second one so you can see the difference while they're both being slided up and then sliding down again let's have a play and see what that looks like there you go. You can see the difference now. If I play it for you slowly, you should be able to see the difference while they're falling. You can see here that there's time difference between the letters, and that's exactly what we're going to do. As soon as this one ends, what we want to do is we want to select both text layers, make sure they're lined up, and then we're going to drag them all the way to where the second keyframes are, because that's basically where the animation is going to end. As far as the background layer that we created, we need to extend that one um, up until 20 seconds or so and then it's time for us to start working with our next text I'm going to hit the shift key and the letter T to add another text and then I'm going to edit the text and then call this downs and then I'm going to scale this up as well so make it a little bit bigger like that and for this one we need to add some letter spacing between the letters so how to do this we can simply just go to settings and then we should be able to find a setting that is called uh, spacing it is set to negative 20 percent by default we're going to increase that a little bit so we can have some distance between the letters so now it's currently set to 268 percent and that's exactly what we're looking forward to the next thing we want to do is we want to have this text fall down and bounce at the same time and then we also need to drag it further down in the on the canvas like this because there is going to be a shape that's going to show up underneath it once it falls on the ground. Once we have it there towards the bottom of the canvas, we're gonna start by animating this text. How? We're simply going to go to the motion tab on the right side, and then we're simply going to use in as position, and we're gonna choose bounce bottom right there. Same thing, you're gonna notice that the text is very far out. That's because it's gonna start at negative 500 on the X position. So we can go to the preset settings on the right panel, and then we can adjust the y position and grab our text and make it really close to the canvas just like this the next thing i want to do is go and change the uh, rotation first of all we need to change the way how the text is being animated so we're also going to make it by letters and i'll also keep it forward that's fine then i'm going to click on advanced settings to open up more settings and then i can apply some rotation so under rotation I'm gonna drag it to the left side, so I'm gonna make it negative 22. And then we will need to slow down the animation. So I'm gonna drag the bounce bottom animation button on the layer to about three seconds so that we can have a slow animation. Once I press play, this is how it's going to look like. The next thing you wanna do is, sim is simply select your text. And this one is gonna be black. So we're gonna change this color from white to black. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hit the shift key along with the letter R to grab a rectangle. Then I'm going to scale this up to make it a full width. And next I'm gonna drag it from the top just to scale it down to make sure that it's pretty much lined up with my text from the bottom so that it looks like the text is sitting on that rectangle as a ground right there. And I'm gonna zoom out of my canvas and then I'm going to hold the Alt key and drag the rectangle from any side, right side or, or left side, to make it wider than our canvas. Then we'll also grab it from the bottom to make it really big in there so we can have so much space. And I'll tell you why we're doing that in a second. Now, this rectangle should be black in color, but we're not gonna do this now. So I'm gonna show you what needs to be done and then we can move forward. So we'll keep it bl uh, blue for now until we are completely done. So the next thing we wanna do is extend the text layer and the timeline. And I'm gonna click on add animation. And for this one, we're gonna select two properties. These are going to be position and rotation. 
easing is also as is, no problem. And then the next thing I want to do is simply click on the second keyframe, and then I'm going to rotate my text. So I'm going to tilt it also to the uh, right side like this. Make sure it is lined up. So it needs to be, again, pretty lined up with the rectangle as if it's sitting on it just like that. Uh, so you got to just keep working with the angle of your text until you see it perfectly sitting on that rectangle. And then when done, this is the time where we're going to make this text slide to the right side, but it should go in letter and reversed. How are we going to do this? It's very simple. So we're going to select our text and then we will go to, uh, we'll add some keyframes actually. So we're going to add, click on add animation above the timeline. Properties is going to be position. Easing is going to be sign for both in and out. And then now I have my two keyframes. Now I'm going to drag my second keyframe to make it about half, uh, one second and a half. And then make sure the keyframe is selected. And one thing that we need to remember is that we need to hover between the keyframes and then click with our mouse so we can open up our settings again. And then we're going to change the way how the text is going to slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to select and then we will choose reverse like that so that it starts by the letter S N W to O and then finally the letter D. Next, you want to make sure that your keyframe is selected. Then we're going to drag our text simply to make sure it is above. Now you can't see right now what's happening. So you can simply just deselect everything and then go to settings on the right panel. On the canvas mode, you can click on show to be able to see what's going on. You may also change the text color for now until you see what's going on. Position the text you exactly where it needs to be. And then when you're done, then you should be good to go. So this is how it's going to end up where it is. Then I can go back and change this color to black and then I'm, I'm safe to go to canvas mode and click on hide. Then now we can just go back to the very beginning of that one. Take a look, right? You can see it's falling down one by one. This is so beautiful and it's so amazing, but it's obviously going to become more beautiful when we add some um, shadows to it. Now it, we can go ahead and change the uh, rectangle color from blue to black. And then it is time for us to make duplicates of our text. So it was so easy for me to apply all the animations that I wanted and then I can make duplicates and that would be the shortcut in order to save your time. What we're going to do here is we're going to simply make a duplicate of our text by hitting the control and the letter T and then the one at the bottom we're going to change its color from black to white and then I'm going to make sure that my playhead is uh, at the very end of the bounce bottom animation. Then I'm going to hold the shift key with the right arrow key and I'm going to click twice or press the right arrow twice so that I can end up with this uh, sh white shadow right there. And next, I want to make sure that I have a little bit of a difference as well. So I'm going to drag the text box underneath and make sure there's only a one frame difference between the first one and the second one that we can just go back and take a look. You can start noticing here that there's a difference in the letters of um, animation. So let's just go back and have a look at that. Take a look. There you go. This is so nice, right? It's so beautiful that way. Now here's what we want to do. We need to animate the rectangle shape. So we're going to zoom in on that part and then we can start working with our rectangle while the text is falling down like as it's almost there on in position right we need to make sure that this guy slides up to to, to go underneath the text so here's what we're going to do we're going to have the uh, rectangle start after a few frames while the letter d is almost there in position then we're going to sele keep selecting our rounded rectangle and then i'm going to click on uh, add animation i'm going to go to properties we'll do position Easing is going to be as is. Now we're going to select our first keyframe and then we're going to drag our rectangle to the bottom of the screen just like this. Take a look one more time. All right, there you go. And at that point, when this text is about to rotate, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that our playhead is on the first keyframe of our duplicated layer. And then we're going to select our rectangle. We're going to click on add animation and we're going to use rotation, right? Keep it as is. Next, select your second keyframe and simply just rotate or tilt your rectangle shape like this. And that's pretty much it, right? There's nothing uh, much to it. So we just go back. It was so easy, right? Like that, take a look. There you go. And then it was just fall down one by one. Now at that point, I want to 
continue to have the rectangle on the screen, no problem, until the text, the all the texts are gone. And then we can start by grabbing our characters. So this is the point where you get to choose your own character. Um, in my example, I'm going to use the cyclist. You can choose any character. You can have characters running after this. You can have animals. Uh, you can do whatever you want, really. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go to my characters right there. And then I'm going to type in cyclist so I can get the character that I'm looking for right there. And then that will be the one I'm looking for. It's going to be the 3D one right here. Next, I'm going to change the action to ride on a bike and sprint like this. And then I'm going to flip the character right here. And I'm going to make sure that my character is also tilted. Oops. So it was also tilted so that she's actually um, lined up with the rectangle like this. And we're going to tilt it even more. All right, there you go. I think we're good to go now right there. Next, we're going to extend the um, character layer in a timeline. And then I'm going to select my character. I'm going to click on position. Easing is going to be sign for both in and out. Then I'm going to click on my first keyframe and simply just drag my character right onto the left side outside the canvas right there and then select my second keyframe and make sure that my character goes away also go to outside the scene right here and it should be also lined up and then i can extend the uh, keyframe just to slow down the animation and then we can just go ahead and watch the whole thing like that take a look and there you have it right it's so amazing and like i said you can use your business name you can use your slogan and you can you can use any character. It doesn't have to be the cyclist. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out my other logo animation tutorials on my channel. I'll leave a link to that uh, on the top right uh, corner so you can click on that one and watch it. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.